Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where exploring is half the battle. Today we're still working on getting off of the planet Triton. For some reason, it's just been a real challenge. I've modified the crawler here and there to see what works best to get off this planet. As you can see, I added eight large thrusters on the back. I moved the forward atmospheric thrusters more forward, I guess you could say, in order to prevent screwing up the landing gear again. Well, let's see if it works. You can probably see the ice I dug from underneath trying to reload the O2 generators. Now the first couple of times we did this, I didn't use atmospheric thrusters to the best of their ability, and I started running the hydrogen way early, just like I am now. So, following the same trend, I really don't think this effort is going to make us anywhere. Yeah, not going up so fast compared to how fast our hydrogen is going down. It's still an interesting view, I guess you could say. It didn't appear, though, that our eight large hydrogen thrusters could actually push us higher, so I switched back to just using the base small thrusters. Almost. Almost. This unique line that you see is actually where the atmosphere ends. Past this point, there is absolutely no air at all, which doesn't help us much considering we've already been using our hydrogen thrust. Uh, 7,000. Mind you, we still have to get to 40,000 meters to break the gravity of this planet. And I, I just don't think we're going to do it on this run. Yeah, I'm giving it all I got and I can barely get past that point. And even now, even with the thrusters going full blast, we're still not really gaining. You may see the meter go up and down for how many meters we are off the ground. But really, it's just because the terrain is not completely flat. So whenever you go over a mountain, the number will go down in the amount of meters you are from the surface. And if you're over the nicely smooth ice, it'll actually go up. In this case, it's going down because we're losing altitude. Yeah, it's, it's just not going to happen. I can push and push and push, but this gravity is, is treacherous on this planet. It doesn't start decreasing, I don't think, until about 20,000 meters. And then it's very merciless at that. Yeah, we only have a small gain, and it seems like I keep hitting that threshold around 73 to 7,500 meters. Yep. As you can see, it kind of topples off about 7,500 meters, and then we start losing altitude again. Well, I've pretty much depleted the hydrogen on this round. I think I'm going to do a few more modifications, and we're going to try it one more time. Maybe the thrusters are too much weight, and I really need to utilize atmospheric thrusters as much as possible before turning on the hydrogen thrust. That way we can kind of conserve a ways. Now, I'm not going to make you suffer through me digging up ice and reloading the O2 generators and stuff like that. I'm just going to kind of fast forward. But you'll get the point. I always make sure that I turn all the hydrogen thrusters off and all that kind of stuff because they slowly do use hydrogen even though you're not moving. All right, round three, let's go. Straight atmospheric thrust. No hydrogen thrust. Decent liftoff. I don't see any damage occurring to the front gear. 
Well, at least it's not smoking yet. And I kind of butterfly my throttle here, or the thrust vectoring, by tapping the key instead of continuously holding the key. Sometimes you will lose a bit of altitude and your speed will drop, but it allows you to do so without completely overtaxing your power system. All right, we're at 5,000 feet and just straight hydrogen at this point. We should be able to get over this, but for some reason, even though I took that large gyro off of this crawler, we still have an issue with wobbling back and forth for some reason. Oh, what a view. I can't tell if it's sunrise or sunset. I guess it depends on which direction we're facing. I don't really have a compass going on here. And 7,000 meters. I think at almost 7,500 meters will be above the highest peaked mountain on Triton. If you're on that mountain, you definitely need an oxygen tank. There we go, 8,500 meters. Still got about 35% hydrogen left. It's going to be close, I think, but we might be able to do it this round. So it appeared about... 8,500 instead of 20,000 meters that we started decreasing our gravitational force. So I guess we're not fighting as hard, which means that this hydrogen might actually last us to get the hell out of here. Seem to be cruising at a decent pace at this point. 12,000 meters. Only about 60 or 0 0.60 on the gravity. Come on, we are so close. 19, 18 for hydrogen. We can do this. Our gravity is only about 0.34. Almost 20,000 feet. So I guess it kind of does drop off quite a bit. But it the gravity does linger until, I think, around 40,000 meters. It does make it more of a struggle, especially if you roll it low on hydrogen. But if we could decrease our throttle and just kind of butterfly it on and off, then we should be able to extend our hydrogen just by using the H2O2 generators to keep up. 25 G... This is a very high ceiling for any planet, when you think about it. I think only the Earth-like planet comes close, and the alien planet sort of, but the alien planet is a bit easier to leave than what it is for Triton. All right, we're at about 0.14 G, and we have 12 pounds of hydrogen left. That is terrible. Luckily, once we get to space, we won't really need it for anything, and we can let it recharge, as long as we don't have gravity pulling us back down. Whew, man, this takes a long time. All right, we're at point one zero g and 14 pounds of hydrogen. So we've gone up just a little bit because we didn't need to use as much hydrogen to continue to go. So the hydrogen generators are actually catching up a little bit. We're at 28,000 meters. Let's see if I can use these 
back thrusters in order to push us the rest of the way up. I reduced it from eight of them to four of them. That way we're not consuming as much hydrogen, but we should still get a decent thrust while we're in the air. Or while we're in the space, that is. We are so close. It's 0 0.05 G and 13 pounds of hydrogen. Or I should say percentage. It's not actually a poundage. It's a percentage of your overall total. And there we have it. We broke free. It was approximately 40,000 meters. But now we are free of Triton and we're moving on. Our next stop on this venture is going to be the great planet Pertum. Well, it's not that great, but it's the extreme opposite of what Triton is. So Triton is just a big ball of ice, basically, with a few mountains here and there. You know, nothing fantastic. It is a, a simpler place to start out, except for it'll drain your suit power pretty quick because you're trying to stay warm the whole time. But there's plenty of ice around. However, Pertum is a little bit different because it's more like a big desert. There's not much around, and I hear there's some terrible storms that can pop up out of nowhere and strike you with lightning. That's just terrible. Well, let's check our supplies. Last time I forgot to add oxygen. Uh, let's see. No, I should be good. Maybe if we just jump, we can actually make it there. I don't really have another way of accessing it. As long as I keep charging myself on the survival pod, we should be good. I think Purdom's right over there. If it is, I'd say it's approximately 5,000 meters from where we currently are. So once again, it's going to take a multi-jump from our jump drive in order to reach it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you escape Triton's treacherous gravitational field.